This week, the FDA is reviewing the first of three new diet drugs seen as a possible breakthrough in the search for a safe and effective weight loss treatment. Let's bring back our Dr. Jennifer Ashton to talk more about this. This is so important for so many different reasons, not the least of which is there is an obesity epidemic in this country. Exactly. Right? And yeah. people are always looking for a new modality in the arsenal in that treatment. So let's go through the three drugs here. So the first one called Qnexa? Qnexa, exactly. It's kind of like a recipe. It's a combination of two already existing drugs. Mm -hmm. One is a seizure medication or a migraine medication. The other one, people may remember, a stimulant, an amphetamine known as fentermine. Oh. The thinking here is that they work by changing the taste of food and by boosting your metabolism. Oh, interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. so if it changes the taste of food, it would be somewhat less appealing? Exactly, then? and you might not want to eat as much. All right. Second Second one, Contrave, right. also a combination of two drugs. One is an antidepressant. One is, interestingly enough, a drug, Harry, used to treat narcotics addiction and even alcoholism. Mm. Again, the thinking here is that it changes the taste of food right. and also, in doing so, results in weight loss. Very interesting. Uh, let's go to this next one. I have another question for you. What's this called? Loca... Lor <laughs> Lorcaserin. Now, this one is potentially the most exciting of the three. It's the first drug of its class, and it works by stimulating stimulating a receptor in the brain known, mm -hmm. known as the serotonin receptor. That is thought to be involved in stimulating a sense of satiety or, or sending the message to you that, you know what, I've had enough to eat, wow. working centrally in the brain, the central nervous system, and affecting weight loss. This is so interesting because there are three different sort of approaches to exactly. the same problem. Within the medical community, is there unanimity that if a certain thing could be approached that we could get people to eat less? Well, listen, when you're talking about obesity, and we should clarify here, these drugs are not even proposed or should be entertained by anyone, doctor or patient, mm -hmm. for anyone other than those wanting to lose a tremendous amount of weight. These uh, are really for the morbidly obese. Okay. These are not for people who want to lose five or 10 pounds okay. or a couple of pounds before Which is a always the problem with these kinds of things because they're certainly welcome to abuse. Exactly, but to answer your question, in the treatment of obesity, you mm -hmm. want to address it or attack it at multiple different levels. So you want to work possibly in the brain, mm -hmm. possibly in the GI tract. Obviously, we can't forget about lifestyle factors like diet and exercise, exercise yeah. surgery. These are all things that really need to be explored. It's, is there, uh, I would think there would be phenomenal financial motivation to find something that would really work because the numbers just keep growing and growing and growing. Exactly. Not only is a significant health issue in this country with the costs of morbid obesity, reaching the hundreds of millions, billions of dollars, but the pharmaceutical impact or drive to treat obesity is also a billion dollar a year industry. Mm. So when you talk about new medications, as with any medication, even wow. something like aspirin, it's going to come down to risks versus benefits versus options and alternatives. And with these medications, Harry, make no mistake about it, the risk profile is potentially significant. Wow. Dr. Jennifer Ashton, thanks for the insight. Appreciate yeah. it. A lot happens early on The Early Show, weekday mornings on CBS.